All right, so we're going to revisit this 25-inch K7000 that was having the terrible B-plus regulation blooming, screen wigging out, B-plus dipping down to 123 and even 105 at times when the contrast was too high. If you recall this chassis, uh, this was actually from a few videos back. Uh, the two previous videos to this one on the channel were Hanrex Polos, and the one before those is was this one. And I'll link the, that video in the description so you can go check that out if you haven't. I, just, I recommend watching that one first. Uh, I, think it was, I think it's my longest video to date on the channel and the most frustrating. But uh, this was just eating away at me. I have, fi I have fixed it. I have solved the problem. And it was over in a box and just eating me up. Like, what could this possibly be? What could possibly be causing this problem? So... Uh, I have the video linked in the description, but if you want a quick recap, so this was this was blowing HOTs because if you turn up the contrast or the brightness too high past a certain point, the screen would bloom wildly. The B plus would dip down to like from 130 to 105 and all kinds of wild fluctuations. As soon as I hooked up a test pattern generator and just turned it on, boom, the HOT would fry. Uh, so, yeah, the, because the test pattern generator has a higher output, so of course, uh, with these being up to wherever they're okay at on a normal PCB, where the HOT is not blowing up, as soon as you hook up the TPG, kaboom, it blows the HOT. So, the only way I could get that to stop happening was to turn brightness contrast down all the way completely. And then as soon as I tried to turn it up, boom, it'd blow the HOT. So, what ended up happening was, is the, the flatback was outputting like 40,000 volts. The normal range is about 25 to 27,000 volts. And this was putting out 40,000 volts. Now, it wasn't the flyback because I put in a known good voltage regulator and a known good flyback off a chassis that did not have this problem, and it wasn't those problems. So there was something putting out way too much high voltage. And when you would turn up the screen brightness with brightness or contrast, it would go even higher and just take out the HOT. So I did everything you could think of to try and figure this out. I put the 1.6 kilovolt capacitor across the output of the flyback to the horizontal circuit. Uh, I changed, uh, well that fixed the problem of the high voltage being too high, but then I had an image that was super, super, super wide. And I changed out the width cap to like 1.3, 1, 1 uh, I forget what it was, some, some ungodly high number. And that got the screen to come back down to where we had a little bit of width on the sides to where it wasn't too wide. I got this to in a situation where it would work. But the problem was is that I was testing it on a U5000 tube and off camera I put it back on a 7000 tube and it was way too wide still. So uh, I was like, you know what, I, I decided to go ahead and put this back to original configuration. Uh, I put uh, everything back, I took the 1.6 kilovolt uh, capacitor off, uh, I put the 0.39 uh, width cap back in, C38 width cap back in, and just went ahead and turned these, these pots down to a safe level. And I told the owner of this that it's fixed and operational now. You just can't turn up these knobs very high or you'll take out the HOT. And he says, well, that's okay. You know, he's out of town for six months. He won't be back for six months or longer. So he said, just hang on to it and I'll, I'll get it back from you when I come back from uh, my trip where he's going to be gone for six months. And I thought, okay, well, that's good because that gives me time to try and sit here and think about what could possibly be causing this. Now, I changed every single component and double-checked and triple-checked every component that could possibly be the cause of this, and I couldn't find the problem. And it came to down to a point to where I grabbed a working chassis that had no issues and just set these side by side and began doing a visual contrast to compare. Okay, this one has this, and this one has this, and this one has this, and this one has this. And then when I got to this capacitor and the diode in here, if we look in here, there is a capacitor right here, and there's a diode on the bottom right there. Now, ideally, this, this dial would be installed in these two holes on the top side, but this is something somebody did, and it's not uncommon to see this on the bottom side of the chassis. So I think that this was an afterthought mod by uh, Wells Gardner. I know that there's a number of undocumented mods, but this is I think this might be an undocumented mod or a documented mod. I don't know. Don't yell at me. I know there's people out there who get, you know, kind of crazy when they say, you know, people use the phrase undocumented mods because most of these are documented. It's just a matter of finding them. But the issue is that this capacitor and this chassis and this diode were not installed on this one. On this one, 
there was no capacitor in that spot and there was no diode on the bottom and there was just a jumper installed. There was a, a metal jumper across these two pins. I'll try and go back and see if I can show some footage or a screen capture of this location. If I can't find it, you know, uh, I, you won't be able to see it, but I'm pretty sure if I get a screen capture, you'll be able to see that. But in any case, so I decided to try and put a capacitor in there off a donor chassis and put this diode on there. When I did that and turned it on, I had normal high voltage energization. It was around 27,000 volts as it should have been. Um, the, the, it did not sound over energetic as I mentioned in the other video. It sounded completely normal energization. I turned it on and I turned up the contrast brightness and no more problem. The B plus is stable at around 128 to 130, depending on if the, what's on the screen, and that's totally normal. It does not dip, not dip down below 128. If it does, it's like 127.8. So uh, that this capacitor and that diode or whatever this mod is that Wells Gardner put on some of them, and not all of them, appears to have fixed the problem. However, well, after doing that, I noticed that we had terrible, terrible linearity problems, horizontal linearity. Both sides of the screen were squished. The middle of this, the middle two thirds of the screen were wide, and the I don't know, let's say an inch on the on the outside were squished real bad. So I had horrible, terrible linearity problems, and I thought well, maybe there's a component in the linearity circuit that was faulty. Um, so it, it wasn't the, the width cap C39 is the correct rating for what's supposed to be in here. I put that back in, and I had the terrible linearity issues. So I thought, okay, we know that the width, the width coil, the horizontal width coil has to be a certain inductance for the linearity to be proper or for the linearity to be correct. So I looked at the part number on the coil. Now this is the original coil here. This is a 9-alpha-2838-001. Uh, but what's interesting is this chassis over here that does not have, there did, did not have the problem that had the mod and everything. The width coil that was in here was a 9-alpha-2838-001. 8-002. So when you look up the, the difference between the 001 and the 002, there's not much difference. However, they're both used on the 25-inch K7000. So I thought, okay, well, let me try and put the dash 002 in here. You're not going to be able to see it. Uh, maybe you can if I zoom in a little bit, but there's a 002 in here now. There, see 002. So I put this 002 in here, and that fixed the linearity issues. So it wasn't an incorrect, it wasn't an incorrect coil. It was just the inductance was wrong for after you add this mod in here. We didn't have the linearity problems when I had this mod out and I had put those extra width caps in there and put that high voltage cap across the flyback. We didn't have horizontal linearity issues like that. So it wasn't until I performed this mod, it must change something or other, because uh, that cap, one leg of this cap directly ties to C38. So it does affect the linearity. So because of that, uh, it, I changed out this width coil to a dash 002, and that fixed the linearity issues. The screen is perfect. A perfect square image. It's not uh, the B plus is no longer dipping anymore. This chassis is now 100% operational with no issues, and it all came down to uh, needing to put that, needing to install that mod with that cap and that diode and change this out to a dash 002. That's all that this needed. So, like I say, it was over in a box, uh, just eating away at me. Like this needs to be fixed because. I you know, I actually kind of lost sleep over this. I lay in bed for an hour, two hours, thinking, what could I do? I'd get up back up, I'd get back up out of bed. I'm not joking at all. I'd get back up out of bed, put this back on the tube and try some stuff. It didn't work. Okay, I'll go to bed. And just I lost a lot of <laughs> a lot of time and sleep and hair at trying to figure this one out. But we've got it fixed. Uh, we just needed to add that capacitor and that diode and change this out to a 002. And the problem is fixed. Now I'll hook this back up and we'll go through it and we'll show you. I'll turn up the brightness contrast and the B plus won't dip anymore. It'll be nice and solid when the screen transitions like an MK. If you go back and watch the video, if you haven't seen it, you'll see the terrible um, screen jumping and the B plus was dipping down to like 105 or 107 or some crazy low number. And it would, and if you let it go for too long, it would take out the HOT. So yeah, that's all it needed. I'll get it back on a tube here and we can go through and witness uh, that it's now operational. All right, so we're on the tube. Again, this is my U5000 tube. This is the one I use for testing everything because the U5000 is compatible with all of the Wells Gardner standard res chassis. 
So for the most part. So we use this one here, so we're gonna use that. So uh, we're all hooked up. We got uh, anode, neck, yokes hooked up, ground, video source, uh, power, and remote board. So nothing left to do but to turn this on and we'll, we got uh, ready B plus ready to monitor over here to make sure it stays around 130. Uh, MK board, trusty MK board is hooked up. So let's turn it on and we'll show it in action here. You'll hear a nice normal uh, high voltage energization sound, not the way over energized that we're normally used to seeing. And yeah, should be good. So here we go, slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. Yes, nice and normal. And let's put this on the tripod. And you can see we have a nice perfect square image. There's no linearity problems. Everything is now perfect. Just had to add that cap and that diode and change out that width coil. And of course we know from, actually contrast is too high right now. A little bit too high. Right, oh, that's brightness. Right there is a bit better. And oh, turn brightness back down a little bit. Right there. All right, so now let's uh, monitor our B plus. I don't know if you can see it. It's one twenty nine point one. Can you even see that? Yep. All right, now let's. Watch what it gets here. 120, eh, 128.7. It's not uncommon for this to dip, you know, half a volt or, you know, whatever. But, uh, yeah, so. Let's uh, give it some credits. And as we know before, when it would get down here and start the round, it would just go wig out completely and the B plus would go crazy. We're at 128.9. And... Boom, it went to 129.2. No more giant collapse and all that. Turn back on you. Now let's turn up our contrast higher than it needs to be. Right there. And we're 127.5, but yeah, no more craziness. So yeah, that resolved it, believe it or not. That's all the way up. 125, that's not uncommon, but no one's ever going to run it like that, so we'll turn it back down to where it needs to be. We'll say right there. And ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Perfect. Uh, let's move this back a bit. I can't move it back. I just want to get a better shot of the meter here. We can see that, right? 128.7.8. Perfect. I have no little punch, dang it. All right. All right, well, there you go. Nice, quick, and easy. Um, just wanted to do a follow-up on this to say that I got it figured out. And if you ever come across a... Uh, we do have a little bit of linearity issue on the on the sides, but again, this is a U5000, so uh, U5000 tube and yoke on a 7000. I'll test it. I'm sure it'll be fine on the 7000, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's not anything to complain about. It's perfect right in the middle. Uh, I don't know if you can see that bolt hole there. That, well, from the perspective, from I'm looking, you're off to the side a bit. The perspective is dead center in the, in the timer. So, yeah, um, if it works on this, it'll work on, on anything as far as MK goes and TPG. So, as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and just hook up the TPG because I'm curious. Kill this. I'm not going to touch brightness contrast. So before, if I was to do this before we did, we added the cap, and we before we added the cap and the diode, if I was to do this before that, the HLT would immediately just short out immediately as soon as I hooked up the TPG. So let's hook up the TPG now. I dropped my controller. And this will be the real test of whether or not this is fixed.
TPG on. Here we go. No problem. You can even see contrast is too high. Turn it down to right there. Yeah, there you have it. Where are we at? 128.9, so B plus is supposed to be 130 on the 25 inch, but it's, it's it usually hovers around 129, so 128.8 is fine. And let's put this back down here a bit. I'd like to be able to angle this a bit better, but there's just no, my bench isn't deep enough here. So if we scroll through here, can we still see it? Uh, not really. I wonder if I can. I'll just hold it. 128.8. We'll scroll through here. 128.7. I'd say, you know, this tearing and stuff up here, that's all part of, that's all an uh, issue at the TPG. So, um, not worried about that. But, all right, that was it. So, Thanks, and uh, stay tuned, and I appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next video. Okay, guys, coming in here on a postscript to kind of show uh, the circuit in action, because I probably should have mentioned that I was going to do this, because I was editing the video, and like in hindsight, I probably should go ahead and explain this. So here we have the schematic up here. Now, it's for a 19-inch K7000, but for this circuit, it shouldn't be any different. I couldn't find a 25-inch schematic, uh, but... For all intents and purposes, this should be the same. So we have right here on this T1 is our flyback transformer. And coming off this first winding up here, you have one, two, four, three, five, and so on. Coming off of one, we follow this trace down here, uh, and it goes across C36 to the HOT, but it's also tied directly through D18 and the C38 width cap. So if we go over here, here's our C37 and our D15. These are the two components that I had to install that were originally missing on this chassis. I robbed these two from a donor chassis, put them in this chassis, and it fixed the problem. As I've mentioned, you know, almost ad nauseum now. I don't know why I always repeat myself, so sorry about that. But <laughs> uh, C37 and D15 are directly tied in here, and I think, as far as I can tell, are smoothing out the voltage through D18 across C38. So with these missing, uh, I don't know if they're... See, this would explain why with these components missing, we had too much voltage across the HOT, and that's why the HOT was being zapped out or shorted whenever you turn contrast brightness up too high. It was getting too much voltage out of the flyback across the HOT and killing it. So once we put in C37 and D15 and smooth that voltage out, you can see that one leg of C37 goes directly to one leg of C38, as well as D15. The other leg of D15 and C37 go right to ground. And it goes through, if you, it goes right to ground. If you look here, there is a little star, and the star indicates X-ray radiation related component. Now, I don't know, these components were absolutely not installed on this chassis from the factory. So I don't understand really why they're not here. Maybe there was something, some other component in the circuit that went out of tolerance and it's affecting this, which is requiring these to be installed. I don't know. Uh, I, part of my troubleshooting before was going through and making sure all the, you know, the shutdown pot was set properly. All that stuff is okay. And the chassis operated and worked just fine if you turned the contrast brightness down. And when you turned them up, that's when it got unstable. Now that could be part of this X-ray pro X-ray protection circuit that's going haywire. And that's why when I put these two components in, C37 D15, everything went back to normal because it's part of the X-ray radiation protection circuit, which is part of the high voltage circuit, which of course is tied in with C38 width cap and D18 and our C36 and HOT and right off the flyback and so on and so forth. So I just wanted to go ahead and clarify some of this stuff to make it a bit easier to understand. And which uh, having these two components out, 37 and D15 absolutely can cause this type of problem if they're related to the flyback circuit and the HOT circuit, which they absolutely are based off this diagram. So I don't know if D18 is supposed to block the voltage coming from the HOT or to the HOT. Uh, that's get more on the engineering side of things, and I'm, I'm I don't know too much about that. I'm just I'm I know just enough to be dangerous. That's that's what it is. So yeah, this is part of the X-ray radiation protection circuit. So that's very interesting. Uh, just wanted to put this out there. If you have any thoughts or uh, someone that knows more about this than I do, put down in the comments because I, I'm interested to find out what you think about this because with these components out, 
Uh, it definitely affected the system in a negative way, but why were they not installed from the factory? And why did all of a sudden this thing, I don't think it was running like this forever. It very well could have been, but this could be something that was installed as an afterthought, like I say, and maybe didn't get incorporated. I don't know. But they're on the schematic and they're supposed to be there per the diagram. So I don't know why they weren't installed originally. But anyway, so yeah, hopefully that helps you out. Um, you know, like I say, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, I appreciate it. Let me know down in the comments if you have a, an, an opinion on why these were not there originally. But putting them in makes the system work the way that it's supposed to. Otherwise, yeah, I appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.